Welcome to the Resilient Retail Game Plan, a podcast for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable creative product business with me, Catherine Erdley. The Resilient Retail Game Plan is a podcast dedicated to one thing, breaking down the concepts and tools that I've gathered from 20 years in the retail industry and showing you how you can use them in your business. This is the real nuts and bolts of running a successful product business, broken down in an easy, accessible way. This is not a podcast about learning how to make your business look good. It's the tools and techniques that will make you and your business feel good, confidently plan, launch and manage your products, and feel in control of your sales numbers and cash flow to help you build a resilient retail business. Welcome, it's episode number 47 of the Resilient Retail Game Plan. My name is Catherine Edley. I am your host as well as the founder of the Resilient Retail Club. The Resilient Retail Club is my membership group for creative product businesses and you can find out more at resilientretailclub.com. Today, I am very excited to welcome Vanessa Rinaldi, also known as Mrs. Social. Vanessa is a paid advertising specialist And she is also a Pinterest expert, which is what the theme of today's episode is all about. As you know, over the last few weeks, we've been talking to various different experts and small business owners about a whole host of different things that you can do to move your business forward. So we're going to explain why Pinterest is such an important tool for businesses and not just a place where you can plan your next holiday. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Hi, it's lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. So you and I, I was just thinking before we started, we met through Discover, the networking group. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Yeah, love that group. Big fan. Big fan. Absolutely. Absolutely fantastic. And I'm trying to think it might, would it? Yes, I guess it would have been 2019 or maybe even 2018. I feel like we've known each other for quite a long time now. Yeah, we certainly have, haven't we? (laughs) (laughs) So I wanted to get you on today because we're talking about Pinterest. As you know, we're talking about a whole series of different things that people can look to use to help grow their product business. And of course, Pinterest is something that, especially in the last year or so, has been just coming up more and more often in conversations with clients, with members of the club. Everyone's really curious about Pinterest in a way that I think they haven't been before. So before we dive in, do you want to just tell us a little bit about what you do and why you're such a great person to talk to us about Pinterest? Yeah, so I am a paid ads specialist. So I specialize in supporting high achieving women in business with their ads, whether it is on Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest, or as I'm seeing more and more, all three. And you also teach courses on Pinterest and run masterclasses as well. Yeah, so I empower people to be able to manage their own Pinterest accounts themselves. I also train them on promoter pins and I launched my Pinterest course this time last year, my very first Pinterest course. And since then, I've run it three times. (laughs) It's sold out every time. And as you say, people are really, really looking to invest in Pinterest Last year was a massive boom. Um, And yeah, we had an amazing time on the course. And now I see people coming back again and again saying I'm getting some amazing results. And this is really interesting for me. Fantastic. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about why if you're somebody maybe who you've heard of Pinterest or most likely, let's face it, before I started looking at Pinterest for the business, my main use of Pinterest was making boards about holidays that I wanted to go on or a kitchen renovation or something like that. So do you want to tell us a little bit about why it's such a good tool for business specifically? Yeah, we all used Pinterest like a magazine, didn't we, to curate what we wanted our future to look like. So whether it was our wedding or our nursery or our latest garden project, And now it is an amazing tool for businesses. So people are still using Pinterest in that way to plan their future, to get inspired. But why it's interesting for businesses is actually you are able to reach your buyers much earlier on in their journey. So because people come to Pinterest to plan, to save, 
to look to the future, actually, instead of um, reaching them when they're ready to buy, you're reaching them much earlier on. So you're front of mind when they come to make that all important purchase. And I've seen that in the last year. I worked with a client called International Elf Service who create beautiful letters for children from Elfie at Christmas time. And last year was mad in terms of Christmas on Pinterest. People were actually planning Christmas in April because we had nothing better to do. But this particular product, I started working on their Pinterest account and promoted advertising from August. Yeah. And what, what I saw was that in August, people are starting to say they're turning their minds to Christmas. They're starting to plan what they might purchase for their friends and family. But then they really come into their purchasing behavior in September. So often pinners are much earlier on to plan and purchase. So really, by the end of November, they've done their Christmas shopping. They're those ones that have done their Christmas (laughs) shopping. So if you've ever wondered who are these people, they are pinners. So it's slightly different. I also obviously work with Facebook and Instagram advertising. And really, you know, you can get loads of sales in December in terms of last minute purchases, etc. But really, they're kind of done by the end of November in terms of Pinterest. So you're reaching those buyers much earlier on in their journey. It's an opportunity for you to reach a new global audience. So we're all about, as marketers at the moment, about diversifying our marketing channels. So making sure we're not relying wholly on Facebook or Instagram, for example, and really thinking about maybe diversifying to Pinterest or TikTok or really thinking about driving email sign up so that you can own that data. But on Pinterest, it's a really amazing opportunity to reach a new audience that hasn't thought about you and also reaching a global audience. And what's really incredible about Pinterest is ultimately it's built to drive traffic. And this is what we find so hard on Instagram and Facebook because we're often relegated, if you like, for including <laughs> links. We can't, if we right. don't have a swipe up, you know, I don't have 10,000 followers. I can't swipe up to my blog or whatever. So if you don't have that ability, then it's really hard to drive traffic from your social to your website. And that is where your amazing products are. And we want eyeballs on them. So The great thing about Pinterest is that you can drive really great traffic and often really low cost traffic if you're considering promoted pins. And I think the the thing that really stuck out to me there, and I know that you've said this to me before, is that pinners are purchasers, right? People are there, they're doing their research, but they're there to plan a purchase, right? And I think it's really important to think about that because if you think about what you're on Instagram for as a user, not we're not thinking about as a business here, but as a as a as an individual, you know, when I'm on Instagram. Well, to be fair, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty much always on Instagram as a business. But, you know, when I'm on as a person, then I'm there to find out, you know, how my family in the States are doing or to see pictures from somebody's wedding. Whereas when I'm on Pinterest, I'm there to plan, if not a, direct, a purchase immediately, but I'm there to plan a project or I'm there to plan something that involves spending money. Yeah, absolutely. When we go on to Facebook and Instagram, we're going on as people to be social when we're not going on in a business text context. We're going on to be social. And so those adverts, and I can say this because I advertise across all three, <laughs> but ultimately those adverts interrupt that experience the whole time. They are constantly interrupting that flow. Whereas mm. Pinterest, we are going on to plan a purchase, whether we're ready to buy yet or not, that's irrelevant. We're going on because eventually we will buy that blue sofa or sparkly headband or children's leggings or whatever it is. And it, what we're seeing recently is that actually the cost of advertising on Pinterest is two times higher return on ad spend for retailers on Pinterest than on any other social platform. Yeah, there's some really interesting stats around about Pinterest and promoted pins. And I think what we're seeing is that the UK have just taken such interest in Pinterest (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) over the last year. And so there's more and more shoppers going on there. What's more, we saw a big migration of people heading over to Pinterest during COVID and this is not going to change this is a trend that will continue because it is a positive marketing platform you and I go on there to plan to be inspired to feel good about ourselves but it's our special space it's Mm. somewhere where 
we don't have to engage with people. And as much as we love engaging with our clients and our customers, don't we? Um, Absolutely. (laughs) You know, it is tiring and it's exhausting and it demands a lot of us. So actually, you know, to be able to go over to Pinterest and every single pin that we pin is about our products and selling our products. And that is it. No engagement, no DMs, etc. Then actually it's revealing itself as a very positive marketing platform and I think that is why people like to go on it as businesses but also like to go on it as purchasers because Pinterest are investing heavily in tools and features which support mental health on the platform rather than play into this you know the like culture the comment culture etc. That's such a good point. And I'm so glad you brought that up because I quite often think about Pinterest or when we're talking about, with people about it and, the, and what makes it so good for product businesses is that it's sometimes I think a great one for introverts. You know, Instagram's made it pretty clear that they want video. Uh, yes, of course, it doesn't have to be video of your face necessarily, although to be honest, often videos of people's faces is what does really well. Mm-hmm. But it's become almost I mean it's become increasingly important to show up for your business to be visible on the other platforms which as you said comes naturally to some people to some people it doesn't but they learn to love it and for some people they just find it exhausting and I think that that if somebody comes to me and they says they say to me that they're extremely introverted they just cannot engage with putting their face anywhere on social media then often I do think Pinterest is the way to go Yeah, absolutely. I mean, most of the content there, a large percentage, I think it's something like 97, 98% of content is unbranded. So you have just as high a chance as, for example, John Lewis or Selfridges or wherever of showing up for your audience, as long as you're using brilliant visuals or brilliant video content and you're using keywords. I suppose that that also is another element of the platform that it's not really social media in the traditional sense. It's actually more of a search engine. Yeah, absolutely. And I probably should have said this at the start in that it is not cool. It doesn't call itself social media platform. Right. If it were to, it would be the fastest growing social media platform. But it doesn't call itself and it calls itself a visual search engine. Oh. So ultimately you pin a pin whether it's a single image or a story pin or a video pin and I'll talk about the differences later and then behind that you're putting a pin description and that includes your key search terms so for example if somebody is looking for a black t-shirt for their husband they are the kinds of search terms that they would put in at the top of the Pinterest search bar. And then you're starting to look as a seller of these black T-shirts as to what other keywords people are searching for. So it works a little bit like Google, but in terms of, but visually, essentially. And what that means for us as businesses is that they hold a lot of data and that's fantastic for us as business owners and marketers because they release regular reports which if you haven't come across the Pinterest report it is worth a read for sure Uh, I love their reports they're so fascinating you just get them by going to their blog or signing up to their email list right they're all free Yeah, they're all free and they give a wealth of information. So what they call them are a not yet trending report. So because (laughs) these pinners are searching so early on, actually Pinterest can report on what they think the trends are going to be based on search habits. So, for example, things like athleisure, things like, I can never say this, skinimalism um, is going to be a, a trend. What things- is skinimalism, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> so it's minimalistic makeup, as far as oh. I understand it. Things like vibey lights and, yeah, Athflo and Japandi, which is like a mix between Scandi and Japanese um, aesthetic. So all of these things we know are going to, happen so as pinners we can think okay well actually I have this product range that really fits into that so I'll make sure that I have a board which is called I don't know for example Athflow and I'm going to put all of my products on there and I'm going to ensure that I use that keyword and that is how you are going to have just as good a chance as for example Sweaty Betty at your Athleisure wear showing up. 
So it's not only then a great platform for people to promote their products, but also to your point, a really great place for small business owners to find out more about what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I always say to my clients, even if you're not yet ready to pin on Pinterest, make sure that you access it as a business resource. So there's obviously the Pinterest report, which we've talked about. Grab a cup of tea and make sure you delve into that. Then there's the trends tab. And this is fantastic for plugging in your keywords and seeing when people are searching for them. So last year, we saw Christmas trending in April, which was very unusual. But prior to that, really, they're starting in August. If you were to put in something like black sparkly leggings and see, you know, when is the time of year that people are looking for those or work wear, um, interview wear, anything like that. Have a look at your key products and your product sets and have a look at when people start to search for them. And why that's important is then, you know, when your content should be pinned on Pinterest so that you're ahead of the curve. It's gaining traction for when people are ready to make that purchasing decision. Perfect. So let's say you're listening to the podcast. We've convinced you you're a small business owner. You think, all right, yes, you can. That's it. I'm going to give Pinterest a go. Where would you suggest that people start? Okay, first of all, you need to get yourself set up. So I always recommend to get your domain verified. So this is basically to ensure that your website is talking to Pinterest. There's no point somebody, and we've all had it, where we go onto Pinterest, we see a product we absolutely love. You click through and it doesn't go to a website or it Mm. goes to a 101 or whatever. And it's so infuriating. And what an amazing opportunity that that business person has missed. So make sure that your website is speaking to your is speaking to your Pinterest account. Register for Rich Pins. Rich Pins are a free tool that so many people miss out on. And they're brilliant for product based businesses because once you've registered for Rich Pins, your pins will then pull in information from your website. So they will pull in your the price of your Uh, product, the availability. So it's out of stock. People don't have that experience where they click through and then go to your website. Oh, that's fantastic. I didn't realise it it looked at stock. That's really helpful. Yeah, super helpful. Get your process set up. So use something like Canva to set up 10 templates. Some might have text overlays. Some might just be a product with your uh, logo or it might be your website at the bottom. I always recommend trying to have some kind of branding, especially if you're a small brand, so that it builds your brand's awareness. So set up 10 templates on Canva and then they're ready to go. So you don't have to keep changing them and creating them every time. Mm. Pay attention to your data. So when you start pinning, look at what's working. Is what's working actually a very simple picture of a product on with a white background? Or is it a product, you know, more of a lifestyle shot, etc.? You may find that the pins that work on Pinterest are different to the content that works on Instagram and Facebook. So don't assume what's going to work and make sure you're looking at your analytics. And then lastly, um, be consistent. So Pinterest is all about pinning regularly. You do not have to pin a lot of content now. So prior, you know, sort of beginning of last year, Pinterest is saying you need to be pinning 20 to 30 pins a day, which all of my clients would, you know, (laughs) reel in shock about. But (laughs) ultimately, what they're after is fresh content. So from one product, you could create 10 pins. Some of them could be video pins. Some of them could be story pins. Some of them could be carousels. Some of them could be just static images. And then you've got 10 opportunities for your content to be seen, 10 opportunities to send traffic back to that product. But then it's about when it says 10 different pins and and also, you know, you can pin one image to different boards and then that also counts as different pins. Yeah, so use something like Tailwind, Mm. uh, which I recommend to all my clients to schedule your pins. And honestly, you could do your pin scheduling for the next few months in just a morning. Yeah, Tailwind is amazing, I have to say. Very early on in my business journey, I paid somebody to manage Pinterest for me. And then I started and then I I decided that I was going to do it myself. And I started doing it through Pinterest, through Tailwind. And I was just completely amazed. I was like, wow, 
<laughs> this is so so slick and easy and uh, you can even create pins through they've got pin uh, tailwind create as well where you can actually they keep the templates as a sort of an add-on you can just do, create the pins and schedule them inside tailwind i definitely think it's such a good good piece for pinterest do you want to just talk us through the different uh, pin formats there yeah so you've got your story pin which is brand new for this year and not everybody will have access to this in the UK yet most people will need to request access I did do a story pins workshop a few weeks ago Mm -hmm. Um, so if you want to head to my website you can download that and that will talk you through exactly what a story pin is but the clue is in the title it's very similar to an Instagram story but it's a story that's pinned in one session so the difference between an Instagram story and a Pinterest story is that Pinterest is evergreen. So anytime you pin a piece of content, it can be seen regardless of what type of pin you're pinning. It can be seen in years to come. So right. um, that's the massive difference between um, all content really on Pinterest and other social media platforms. But a so- story pin is also evergreen and it's formulated from a beginning a middle and an end so the ideal kind of number is five and you'd have maybe a video to capture somebody's attention and talk through something like uh, a designing process or how you create your products or how you research new styles for your product range for example and so this is not something that will disappear like an Instagram story it will be it will be like a it so it's it's sort of like so how is it different from a carousel pin then? So can it com- combine video and photos? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So a carousel pin is a series of static pins and a story pin can can include videos and static pins as well. So there's lots of different choice. And what we're seeing is the algorithm essentially is favoring story pins and video pins. So if you're somebody that's been on Pinterest a while, I would really recommend both of these. If you've nailed your kind of static pin and you know what works, then try these because the algorithm, you know, it's a game essentially. If the algorithm is favoring them, then play the game and post more of them because particularly with story pins they are being given a lot more prominence on the app they are being shown at the top of the app just the same as with Instagram stories and they're also just sitting at the top of your profile so story pins are brilliant in terms of impressions an example is that I might post a story on Instagram and get 150 250 people on average looking at them I post a story pin and it gets 6,000 to 7,000 impressions. Wow. Do you use the same content or are you creating specific Pinterest content? It's pretty similar content, but it's more curated. So I need to think about exactly what somebody wants from that story. So it will be a bite size. This is how you create a Facebook ad or this is how you set up a Pinterest profile or whatever. So tutorials work really well as stories. Right. People are also very much actively looking for video content. So I know that's not everybody's dream to hear, um, (laughs) but people are literally actively searching in the top of the toolbar how to uh, video on how to do X, Y, Z or buy X, Y, Z or style X, Y, Z, for example. So videos very much to be considered, especially if you are looking to grow your account. Yeah. And then there's single images and there's carousels. So they're the kind of, they're the four that I would always advise to, yeah, diversify. I think the content on Pinterest is getting more and more interesting and we're engaging with it a lot longer and ultimately Pinterest wants to be the number one place to shop so they do not see themselves as a magazine or a catalogue they see themselves as somewhere where people are going to shop and they want to bring that experience of walking through a shop and feeling textures and seeing different colours and all of that to Pinterest so I think it's going to be a really exciting time. Fantastic it's really interesting and so as you, you mentioned promoted pins because I'm guessing a lot of people when they think about 
advertising, they're thinking, they tend to be thinking about Instagram, Facebook, but you said, can we just touch a little bit more on the promoted pins? So you mentioned that they've been very effective, but how do they work in, how does a promoted pin work on Pinterest? So on Pinterest, you pin a pin and you put a description behind it and you use what keywords you think the user is searching for. And then you have just as good as chance as anybody else at being found. With a promoted pin, you can specify which audience you want to reach. So do you want to reach anybody that looks like people that follow you on Instagram? Or Mm. do you want to um, reach anybody who looks like your email list, so your purchases? Or do you want to reach people like a broad audience, but you only want to reach, for example, women in the UK between 25 and 45? And that's the major difference. You can pick which audience you want to target and then you can pick up to usually around 100 keywords. I'd say like four to six interests as well. So they might target anybody who is interested in DIY or parenting or crafts. Oh, that's fantastic. So you've got that ability to kind of hone in, but then you're effectively kind of jumping to the top of the jumping to the top of the list. Yeah. And as you start to scroll through, you'll start to see what promoter pins end up in your feed. And ultimately, you are what you will appear where your target audience is. And the beauty of that is my pin could go about my, I don't know, my sparkly pink (laughs) T-shirt could go, (laughs) you know, exactly the right age range and demographic that's interested in sparkly pink T-shirts. So it's very specific, whereas when you just put a pin on in an organic manner, it could appear to somebody in the US and maybe you don't ship to the US. Right. I see. Got it. So you can hone it in and make it really specific for you. Yeah. And you can do that pretty cheaply. So what I'm finding really interesting at the moment is thinking a bit more strategically with ads. So using something like Pinterest, you know, all these social networks, they do different things. They're based on different ways of people interacting with them. So as we said before, you know, you go onto Facebook and Instagram to be social, you go onto Pinterest to buy a product. So thinking more strategically, I'm advising think about using promoter pins to drive traffic to their website and you can run conversion campaigns as well absolutely but in a first instance you might want to think about driving traffic to your website through Pinterest but then retargeting them Mm -hmm. using a web audience website visitor audience on Facebook and Instagram so in that way it's kind of more more holistic right and then also as you said not putting your eggs in one basket and being able to get a a wider view of of who's who's interacting with you and who who likes your products yeah absolutely so if someone is again if someone's listening to this and they're thinking yeah that sounds great do I do is it I I think you probably answered this it's not an either or Instagram or Pinterest it's two different audiences, two different ways of reaching out to your customers. But how would you say it differs in terms of the time that it takes? So you mentioned then getting several months worth of pinning done in a morning. So it sounds like it's definitely worth it from a time perspective as well. Yeah, I find it really super simple to manage because you don't have that engagement aspect. So I don't find particularly onerous when it comes to something like that keep an eye on your stats and I think that's where people miss out because they continuously post the same things and actually they're not looking at what's working I will say that um, that was prior to story and video pins becoming so prominent so they do take more time to create but they are worth it so I think a mix of content on Pinterest is really really key And in terms of promoted pins, I would recommend being an early adopter in the UK and really thinking about let's use some budget to test some ads on Pinterest ahead of your busy, silly Christmas season. And actually, let's work out which audiences work, which pins work. Would a video pin work better than a static pin, for example? Does a parenting audience work better than a lookalike of my website visitors, for example? And use this time now to get ahead of the curve for this Christmas, because this Christmas, 
last Christmas on Pinterest was huge this is going to be even bigger Um, just because the shops are open it not everybody is going to shop in that way so I think it's really important to think about it and just do a little bit of testing great advice as always so do you want to tell us a little bit more about where people can find out more about you Yeah, if you head to my website, mrsocial.co.uk, you can find out all about my paid ad services and my Pinterest courses. And you can also find me on Instagram at Mrs. Social, where I I host lots and lots of different tips and tutorials about all kinds of different paid ads. And of course, you can find me on Pinterest. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. So it sounds like pretty much a win win. So, of course, it's the time to get it set up. But why not give it a go and put some of your images up? You've got to have great product imagery anyway. So why not make it work that bit harder and put it on Pinterest as well? Thank you again to Vanessa for sharing so much fantastic information about the platform. And thank you to you as well for listening. I so appreciate each and every one of you. If you have a moment to rate and review the podcast, it is so helpful when it comes to getting the word out to more people. And I promise you, I read every single review. If you want to come over to Instagram to at Resilient Retail Club and tell me how you found today's episode, or why not share a picture of where you are when you're listening? I always love to see those. But thanks again for tuning in. And of course, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be the first to know about each new episode. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, then I invite you to check out resilientretailclub.com. The Resilient Retail Club is the membership for anyone wanting to start, grow or scale a profitable product business. No more trawling Google trying to find the answers to your questions or wading through general business advice that speaks mainly to service-based businesses. Whether you're still at the idea stage or you've been going for a while but want to get more focused and organised when it comes to your business, the Resilient Retail Club is the place for you. With a library of courses tailored to creative product businesses, several live sessions a month and a supportive and active community, the Resilient Retail Club is the perfect membership to help you hit your goals faster. Check it out at resilientretailclub.com.